Welcome back to the channel everybody and welcome back to a new video where today I'm going to talk about two kind of crappy things you need to know about the Dodge Challenger and Dodge Chargers. But these two things also kind of reaffirm my belief that these are the coolest cars on the planet today. And for those of you who keep hitting me up on Instagram thinking that I sold the Hellcat to buy the Lamborghini, here is the Hellcat Red Eye not going anywhere. It is filthy, it is going to get cleaned. First, we gotta roll that intro. What does it really take to make this thing happen? Because the year ahead and the decades ahead, you feel like your life is making progress. So the secret to real happiness is progress. Progress equals happiness. And if we can make progress on a regular basis, we feel alive. And the first step is you gotta have a vision. A vision for what it is you really, truly want. If I'm only rocking what I came with, not too much change. I got the same click. I got my mind on my moolah. All right, let's jump right in. So the first thing you need to know if you're going to buy one of these Dodge Challengers or Chargers is, according to the Highway Loss Data Institute, we are five times more likely to have our cars stolen than almost any other cars out there. The cars are powerful, fast, loud. Yes, the Charger and Challenger Hellcat can make a guy seeking big RPMs drool. Apparently, the fees do too. The whole vehicle theft claim rates for these vehicles are more than five times the all-vehicle average. The folks over at Highway Loss Data Institute say the two modern-day hot rods are far and above the two most commonly stolen vehicles. The really funny thing is, is that the least likely to be stolen car is a BMW 3 Series. And I totally get that because if you watch my channel for a while, I owned two BMWs recently and they spent more time in the shop than they did in my garage, so I figured the thieves don't even want to have to deal with the service issues. But what else is interesting is if you look at the list of the top stolen cars in America, what's interesting is that there are no Mustangs listed, there are no Camaros listed, there's no Corvettes listed, meaning that even the thieves like the Dodge Challengers and Chargers more than those cars. I'm sorry. I had to share that because so many of you Camaro owners and vet owners and uh, Mustang owners beat me up in the comment section. Look, I love all cars, so no offense, um, but it's just true. Um, you probably don't have to worry as much as we have to worry because the thieves love these things. So I've got a couple things I want to share with you that could help you. The first one is go watch Racer X's channel. He shares about the new software update you can go to the dealership and get on your SRT powered Challenger or Charger. What it'll do is it'll kind of like the valet mode where you get to put a code in and it limits the you know horsepower in the car. This new update will allow you to put a code in and it limits it to three horsepower, meaning they can't get very far. Now, no question, they could back up a flatbed or a tow truck and steal that car all day long, and that's an excellent point, but at least it's one additional level of protection, maybe, that'll help protect your car. Next, just be smart. Don't leave your car running to run in and grab a Red Bull at the convenience store. Simple things like that that will protect you from losing your car. The crimes of opportunity are the ones you've got to be mostly concerned about. Somebody coming to your driveway and Slim Jim in the car and hot wiring it and taking off, that's a little more rare than just the obvious easy steals from people who think that they can leave their car running, they're just going to run right inside the store real quick and come back out and their car's gone. Somebody jumps in and takes it. I believe this car is so irresistible that somebody who hasn't even contemplated becoming a thief might be pulled in by the sound of this motor, jump in and take off in your car. So just use your head. Next, park it in the garage if you can. Just makes sense. Or if you have to park in the driveway, which I get it, sometimes I have to because we're shuffling too many cars around, that at least add in a security camera or a security light, a motion sensitive security light. Also, you can have a GPS device installed in your car um, or just take your iPad, charge it up fully, throw it in the trunk and use Find My iPhone to find your iPad if somebody steals your car. 
I learned that strategy one night having a couple too many cocktails with a bunch of friends and leaving my car in a very busy downtown area and the next morning after Ubering home I um, explained to my wife that I did, had no clue where my car was. I let my friend park it for me and I don't know where it is and I don't know where he is and after a few minutes of her giving me crap about needing to grow up I remembered my iPad was in my car so I pulled up find my iPhone found my iPad found my car it's awesome criminals won't be digging through the trunk right away and you could find your car while it's driving down the street just an idea and next you could tie a piece of fishing line to the bumper of your car and then run that fishing line into your house under your door up your staircase into your master bedroom and then tie it around your private parts so when somebody goes to take off in your car you will get a very violent tug that will have you downstairs faster than you ever thought you could move I'm kidding what I meant to say was have great insurance don't go to these cheap insurance companies because you're worried about the cost because when something bad happens and they don't cover the entire cost of the replacement of the car and you have to fight with them or they know you can't afford an attorney so they kind of rip you on the coverage um, you're gonna regret it so big name insurance companies I am neurotic about that if somebody steals this thing I'm gonna get this thing completely paid off and put some money in my pocket and be able to go buy another one within 24 hours it's just it's just something I believe in when it comes to insurance don't cheap out on it all right the second thing you need to know is that if you drive a Dodge period you are significantly more likely to get pulled over and get a ticket four of the top ten cars in the most ticketed cars in America are Dodges two of them are the Dodge Challenger and Dodge Chargers so I'm not shocked by this I'm sure you're not shocked by this when you get the kind of horsepower we get in these cars and the incredible sound and how fun they are it makes sense that people get them and get pulled over now I've owned three I've learned my lessons I've been pulled over probably 15 plus times in these cars I've only gotten one ticket for tinted windows I've done stupid things I've sped and I've burned out my tires right in front of a police officer like an idiot and he just gave me a lecture and then complimented me on the car and that supports my belief that these are the coolest cars on the planet because most of the times I've been pulled over the cops love the car one time he didn't and he gave me a ticket but that's okay so here's a few tips to help you get out of tickets or avoid getting tickets one pay attention unlike I did when that cop was behind me pay attention when you're driving look around pay attention you're gonna step on the gas sometimes you're not gonna be able to avoid it but at the very least take a gander around and even when you do just know that they're hiding out there and they're gonna pull you over if there's 20 other cars around you're gonna be the one that gets pulled over second don't let people goad you into racing it happens constantly, especially in the Hellcat Red Eye. Everybody wants to pull up alongside you and try to talk in or trying to get you to race them. I won't do it. I'm cautious. I know that street racing is a quick way. I thought that was a cop behind me. Street racing is a quick way to get arrested, lose your car, lose your license, and end up with ridiculous insurance if you do come out of the other end of it alive. That's freaking cool. If you do get pulled over, don't be an asshole. I know that sounds crazy, and I know this is where the comment section gets lit up, but don't be an asshole. Cops are gonna pull you over, and that's gonna happen, and it's really simple. You pull into a lighted area, roll down all of your windows, put your hands on the wheel. When the police officer comes up, hand him your paperwork, but have it up here. Mine is all right here. Look at this, in the visor because I am not going to go digging in my glove compartment. I'm not gonna do that, it's just common sense. I think when you do this, when you do the dive, it freaks out the cops. Even when you say, I'm reaching for my insurance, I'm reaching for my paperwork in my glove compartment. I don't care who you are, um, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, I could lie, I could say, I'm, I'm reaching for my, the cops on alert. If it's right here and I have it ready for him when he comes up, how beautiful is that? The cops appreciate it. I've had police officers tell me, thank you so much for everything you did to make me feel safe. 
and then I didn't get a ticket. It's just common sense at that point. And then don't argue with the cop. And if you can, crack a little joke. I always do. I try to lighten the situation a little bit. They almost every single time ask me when I'm speeding, do you know how fast you were going? And my response 100% of the time with a smile is, <laughs> I don't officer, but I, something tells me that you do. And they chuckle, they smile a little bit and just loosen it up and just seem like a nice person. And then always, always ask for a break. Always ask for a break. I will tell you probably seven out of 10 times in my life that I've gotten out of tickets is because I said, you know what officer, I know you have no you know, reason to do this for me. You don't know me from Adam, but here's the deal. If you could give me a break, it would mean the world to me. I've had a rough week, rough day, rough life, whatever it is, but if you can give me a pass today, I assure you I will have learned my lesson and next time you see me driving out on the road, you won't see me speeding. Could you give me a pass? Just ask, can you give me a break today? Is there any way you would consider giving me a break? I don't care how you say it, but you ask. And that forces in the cop's brain to think about giving you a break. If you don't, they're gonna robotically go right through the process, go back, write the ticket, come back, and have you sign the document and cut you, cut you loose. So why not at least ask with a smile, with appreciation in your voice. Now, I'm at the car wash, let's go wash this thing. How's your, uh, how's your family? Perfect, man, how's Thank yours? You. All right. Awesome, dude. Right, Thank thanks. you, my friend, thanks. All right, everybody, hopefully you liked today's video. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. And no wonder why cops pull these things over all the time and everybody wants to steal them. Let's take a look at her all clean. Most people, they're stating what they hope will come together, and if it doesn't happen, then they're disappointed, but they're not too disappointed because they're not too vested. What does it take? A vision is about what you're here to create. A vision that really works is one that excites you.